Let's do some distance. Welcome to Up On Your Left. Tips and techniques for trail riding. Brought to you by the Bicycle Travelogue channel. I'm Sunlight Player. In this series, I'll be sharing helpful information to enhance your bicycling enjoyment. This episode's topic, bike training. With me today, Yellow Butterfly 67. Hello. And Zeal Aspen. How you guys doing? Welcome. We're at Bulls Island Recreation Area in New Jersey on the DNR Trail. So today's topic, bike training. All right, what can we say? Well, the first thing about bike training with biking is keep it fun. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you're looking to enhance your biking, don't kill yourself. The first thing that you want to do is increase your frequency. What do you want to do? Get out there and do it. Three or four times a week. Just get out on the trails and do some riding. Don't kill yourself. Set some goals, some short-term goals for the season or some long-term goals for something that you might want to eventually achieve, right? Uh-huh. When you're drinking water, try to drink water every 15 minutes. Um, exactly. Keep yourself hydrated. Don't wait till the last minute when you're already thirsty, because by then you're already you're already tired and dehydrated. Yeah, you're already dehydrated. Yeah. Exactly. You, you don't want that to happen. No. Mm -hmm. Takes no. the fun right out of your ride. Yeah, exactly. It does. So you want to stay hydrated. Uh, what else here? Um, eating. Well, imp another important thing when when you're training to make improvements is um, breaks. Watch your breaks. When you're on a break, a lot, like a lot of times when you're taking breaks, it's because you're tired, physically tired, or maybe you have to go to the bathroom. But, but things that you want to basically do on those breaks is get some water, or if you brought some power bars, have a power bar or maybe a pack of, of goo, the, the, the gel. How about some of those energy drinks? Those work too. Exactly. The most important thing I think is don't eat too much because I know for me personally, mm -hmm. if I eat too much, it just zaps my strength and it takes me like an hour to, to recover from that and, and get back to cycling at full power. So yeah, um, other people probably have the same same thing where you just can't eat too much at one time. Spread it out. Yeah, definitely. Um, it, you basically, we'll call that maintaining levels when when you're riding. Staying hydrated, uh, eating certain snacks as far as power bars and stuff. You want to maintain your levels. Because when you maintain your levels, you're going to perform at 100%. And so you're going to be able to achieve your goals much faster and without any problems or any high risks of injuries. Because when you start to deplete your, your energy resources, um, you can have muscle pulls or injuries to your hamstrings, tendons. Right. There's all kinds of things that can happen when, when you start to let your energy levels deplete. You don't want to ride too slow. Um, yeah. You're probably on, on a flat, even trail like the, the Delaware Canal and the DNR on Jersey where we're at. It's, it's level, so you want to maintain it a minimum of like eight miles an hour. If you're, if you're at least eight, because if you go any lower, even even eight is like bare minimum, but at that low speed, you're not working your cardio, no. so you're not doing anything there. You're, you're not going fast enough for any momentum, for pedaling momentum. So basically, you're just overworking your muscles and you're not getting any gains. If you get up to like 12 miles an hour or, or higher, at least you can coast or you can lay off the pedals and not apply pressure and because and you, you have momentum. Yeah. And then when it starts to decline, you apply some more pressure to maintain that pace. Right. So don't ride too slow. That's, that's not a good thing. One of the things that worked for me when I first started riding 
is a game I created called Up On Your Left, which is actually the name <laughs> of the series. That's kind of funny. So it came naturally that Up On Your Left is going to be the name of the series. And basically what I started doing when I was riding by myself in the beginning is if I was to see a rider maybe a couple of hundred yards ahead of me, I made it a strong point to catch up to them and pass them and stay ahead of them not to let them overtake me right. and, and that basically made me challenge myself so I kept going and pushed harder and before you knew it I was riding longer and faster so that worked for me and I called that the up on your left game so you guys might want to try to challenge yourselves by creating kind of a game like that where you see somebody hey I want to catch up to that person and pass them and then you know, not let them pass you. Exactly. You know, so that worked. You know, like what Sonya just said, uh, the up on your left game, I, I have a different technique. It's called the bungee cord technique. Mm -hmm. And basically what I do is, uh, like someone's ahead of me, I imagine an imaginary bungee cord connected to them. And I try, try to catch up to them. Mm -hmm. And then what Sonny does, he stays ahead of them. Right. And I try to do the same thing. So the bungee yeah. cord effect. Right. That's bungee. Cool. Or, or try to use somebody ahead of you, catch up to them, and try to use them uh, as a pacer. Let, let, you know, you want to pace them, stay behind them, keep up with them. And um, so that's another thing that could help challenge you is to stay ahead of them. Or, you know, if someone's, in, in, like you look in your rearview mirror and they're gaining on you, so don't let them pass you, stay ahead. Keep them in your rearview mirror. So little things like that, Will, will definitely help you out. There's some other things for training that really are important that, that really help you to once again kind of maintain a level. One of the things that we created is riding in group is a thing that we call stretching your legs. And basically <laughs> what that does is you, will, you would basically do um, a sprint you know, for as long as you want or need and you would just basically just blast and ride as hard and as fast as you can, getting your heart rate up and once you're done, you can either slow down or stop and let the rest of the group catch up. What it does is stretching your legs will get your heart rate up get the blood flow pumping and it flushes out the lactic acid that builds up in your muscles because the lactic acid will start to create uh, well it'll give you sore muscles basically right. yeah. you know cramping all that kind of stuff fatigue they'll feel tired so that flushes all that stuff out so once you're done stretching your legs and your cardio recovers from it you actually feel better you do you know you really do you feel better so stretching your legs is very important. You want to try practicing that. You'll benefit from that, trust me. So um, tell me about pyramiding. Okay, well pyramiding is similar, but it's, it's done at more long range. Here's how that works. Let's say we're riding and you start at, you know, you're riding at 12 miles an hour. Pyramiding would maybe take you slowly up to about any kind of comfort range of like 18 miles an hour and you basically want to try to maintain that for as long as you can and then slowly taper back down. It's, it's more, it's not so much cardio and it doesn't really work for flushing as much but it's more for fat burning because you know, you, you're slowly, so it's not attacking your cardio as quickly. Yeah. So it's more like for, it's more like a fat burning kind of exercise and come back down and, and go back down to your 12 miles an hour. Didn't you do uh, cross training as well? Yeah, I did what about some. That? Okay, cross training. Let's cover that. Okay, so cross training. Uh, last year, I did a lot of running with the biking, and I also did some swimming. And the swimming that I did was um, laps on top, and I did some underwater training. And underwater training is important because what that does is. It forces your lungs, you're holding your, you're not taking any, in any breaths, you're going across the pool, you're going as far as you can without coming up. And what that does is it stretches out your lungs, it opens up the cells, and it increases your VO max, 
which basically is your efficiency for your heart, your lungs to supply the oxygen to your heart. They call that VO max. So that improves your cardio strength. Another thing that, that I always do on riding too is stand up riding. Mm -hmm. I will put it all the way up in the highest gear and stand up. Now when I first started doing this, I was doing maybe a half a mile or a quarter mile, I think, when I first started doing this. But I, I actually got up to a, a 10 mile stretch, standing up for 10 miles without even sitting back down. That's good for training your legs. Uh, it really works the quad muscles and your calves. It's very good conditioning. You can choose a, a, a pace. If you ride faster at like 15 miles an hour, 15 to 18, standing up, of course, you might not be able to ride as far. Yeah. But if you're doing between 12 and 15, you can easily do a lot further. I think when I do like that 10 mile stretch, I'm averaging between 12 and 15. It's not real aggressive. If I do 15 to 18, I might get like five miles out of it before I have to sit down and recover. Apparel. Yeah, clothing, apparel. clothing apparel. Dressing for the weather. Dress for the weather. Right. Dress, for the weather. Dress, dress for the weather, exactly. You know, when it's really hot out, you want to wear some stuff that wicks the, the energy, uh, the, the energy. <laughs> <laughs> that wicks the moisture out. And when it's cold, you want to make sure you put on a heavier clothes to Especially, yeah, keep and you warmer. About what Yellow Butterfly just said, um, when it's colder, like during the winter seasons and uh, fall seasons, um, yes, put on heavier layers, but you want to layer it. Exactly. You want to put one heavy jacket on to find out later on that you're sweating inside of it. You don't yeah. want that to happen. Right. You want to be able to put on multiple layers, but at the same time that have this material that would sweat off. Right. Then you can take layers off if you need. Exactly. Or put them back on if you need. So yeah, that's yep. great. Layers. Right. Onion boy. <laughs> layers. <laughs> got layers, man. You got layers, onion boy. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you have a little story to tell on that, huh? Right? It was, what was that, in the fall? It was in the fall. We were riding up. On the up Jersey DNR, like where we are now. Right, we're riding up towards Frenchtown, and it was colder than we anticipated the ride going to be. I think it was be. like in the 40s, I think. Maybe it wasn't quite that cold, but well, it, was, maybe it was definitely maybe 50. colder than we thought. still, that's pretty cold. Thought. Yeah. And we just had on a t-shirt and pants and didn't wear I think a jacket I had shorts or anything. On. Yeah, it was and, cold. Uh, it was cold. By the time we got to Frenchtown, my knees were so tight and cold. It was a painful ride. Let's just say, not a good ride. Put some fun out Yeah, the not ride. a good ride. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we learned. That was a, a learning experience there. Definitely. Yeah, definitely there. Um, so yeah, dress appropriately for these rides. You guys can ride like when it's nice weather out here like this. You can always ride. Beautiful day. But if it's raining, don't be afraid. If it's only water, you're only gonna get wet. It's not gonna kill you. So you you, you dress appropriately, um, and you just um, ride a little slower. You know, you, you once you have a bike and you've ridden it enough, you're gonna know that bike. You're right. gonna know how it's you're gonna, gonna know perform. How it works and right. how it performs. Exactly. In the water, the the first time you ride in the rain, you might go a little slower, but you're gonna figure it out eventually on 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 how it handles right. and right. how it That's breaks right. and all that kind of stuff. If you suffer from bad knees, uh, you you want to be cautious of the trails that you select to ride on. Try to ride on trails that are level, like the canal paths. Right. Uh, try to avoid hills. And get like a knee brace or, yeah. or good. support. Good. To, it helps you out a little bit. I know I use them on some of our rides that have more help. I mean, we don't really ride on steep hills for the most part, but yeah, knee when braces. I know there's going to be right. hills, Definitely. I do knee braces, knee support. Back braces, right. How about encouragement? Exactly. I mean, you can't really, I mean, you're on your own when you're riding, but the thing with group riding is encouragement. You know, yeah, you can always look to someone else to give you encouragement. Exactly. Uh, like that one time we were doing the Philadelphia tour mm -hmm. with uh, Philly Mike and the rest of the gang. Right. Uh, 
Uh, Pulling that one hill, is that what you're talking yeah, yeah, that one hill. Yeah, uh, it was the Umbria Street Hill. <laughs> That's a challenging <laughs> hill. Some yeah. of them walked up it, but you guys, yeah, we'll get in touch with you. Um, it, it was a group of us going, uh, Sonny and uh, I think it was Pete. No, no. I he, can't remember. Oh, yeah. it, was, it was you and uh, Billy Mike. Right. Who were already at the top of the hill. And you were helping out Will. Yeah, I was helping out Will. Will I already, was struggling on the hill. Mm -hmm. yep. He was struggling on the hill. He really wanted to get off, but I kept pushing on. Pushing on. You can do I it. Kept yelling yeah, at him. Yeah, yeah, you can do it. <laughs> keep going, keep going. You're almost there. Yeah, and he and made it. He, he made, made it. it. That's yep, it. and he thanked him. So, encouragement in the group. You got to remember that there's nothing more contagious than enthusiasm. So uh, an enthusiastic group will definitely be a support structure in, within. Right. You know? Uh, right. Keep it going, you know? Push. Like when we stretch our legs, that's funny. When we're stretching our legs, whoever decides to stretch their legs, uh, the other riders just egg them on and shout out to them, go, 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 you know? Right. You know, we'll see you on the other side, you know? When stretch they're those legs! Stretch those legs, <laughs> look at them go, you know what I mean? So, it's a lot of fun. And, like, you know, basically that's what you want to do. Keep it fun, because if it's not fun, you're not going to be as inclined to, to keep doing it. Uh, eventually, you're going to get bored with it, and the next thing tired. you know, you're not going to, some one day you're going to be like, you know, I don't do that anymore. You know? When it's fun, you want to get out there because we love doing this stuff. I mean, that's why we're sharing the wealth of information. That's that's why we're here today, um, sharing what we know with you guys because we love it so much. It's a lifestyle for us.